Follow me, Smiko, Sam Possible. I'm Mikos. My name is Taffrey16. Welcome back to another reaction video, and welcome to another reaction to Have I Got News for You. So, this is a Twitch points request by Bert Jordy Guy. Thank you for using your points on this. Uh, so, back in October, I watched the episode that was Angus Deaton's last ever hosting the show. This is the episode right before that, Series 24, Episode 1. The last episode I reacted to was more of a normal one. Not at all a drama one, but, I mean, the drama ones are the ones that draw, let's be honest. It's fun to break up the monotony, it was fun to break up the monotony with the normal one, but, you know, ultimately the drama episodes, I'm sure, are what makes for the best reactions. <laughs> drama sells tickets. First broadcast, October 18th, 2002. Good evening and welcome to another series of the program now officially immortalised in Edwina Curry's diaries. Recorded TV show Have I Got News For You Tonight with Ian Hislop of Private Eye, Young, Hip, Slick, etc. <laughs> Alright. Bloody hard work, especially if your period's coming <laughs> on. Goddamn. A little too much information. In the news this week, in the latest episode of Changing Rooms, one man tries to rectify what the neighbours have done to his house. his new open prison in Suffolk, police reveal the new arrangements under which Geoffrey Archer will be allowed out on day release. <laughs> and the ladies at the Huntington Conservative Club prepare for a visit by John Major. Ron Paul Merton's team is the former editor of the Today programme on Radio 4, who recently criticised political programmes for giving in to chat and headlines and drivel. Well, it's kept us in work for the last 12 years. Yeah. Not little. And with Ian Hislop tonight, the wife of former government minister Neil Hamilton, who recently said, contrary to popular belief, we actually turned down a lot of offers because they are unsuitable. Christine Hamilton. <laughs> who will be appearing with her husband in Jack and the Beanstalk at the Yvon Arno <laughs> Theatre in Guildford. Uh, round one features four controversial news stories for the sake of argument. Ian and Christine. It's that man again. Oh, she's got glasses on. And um, that's Saddam Hussein. They're voting, are they? That's his parents voting 12 million times. <laughs> oh, is this 2002? Blood. There's Tony. Four years left, fucker. <laughs> that's a dossier. They're just flipping through it quickly in case you want to read Oh, it. shit. <laughs> Saddam losing the election but winning the count, isn't it? Yeah. It does help that the ballot paper in Iraq says, would you like A, to vote for Saddam Hussein, B, mm. to die horribly? <laughs> <laughs> That's basically Russia now. This right. is the only name on the, the paper, so 100% of the vote's not, it's not that Or unlikely, North Korea. No. Apparently the streets were empty and the voting booths were empty as well, so either everyone's dead. <laughs> well, a Daily Telegraph reporter did manage to find a polling booth where a six-year-old child was casting his vote. Uh, and they actually asked the Daily Telegraph reporter if he wanted to vote as well. <laughs> so when can we look forward to uh, World War Three? It's been postponed tonight. Um, President Bush has found out that North Korea is in Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many of our country are in favour of it? Not last of Forty percent, is it? Uh, no, no, one, not forty percent. I should think thirty. It's not a guessing game. <laughs> I don't read the newspaper. All <laughs> oh, right, that may be a bit of a drawback you might find. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was That's a drawback last time, long. five and a half years yes. ago, so um, I have read the Is it that long since, since you're on? Darling, I have been waiting for you to invite me back. Five and a half years I've had to wait. Really? Mm. Uh, mm. Not long enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, was <it> kidding. <laughs> yeah, so 42% of the UK are now in favour of going to war, apparently. Are you for or against, Rod? I, I couldn't be, possibly uh, jeopardise the par impartiality of the BBC. <laughs> 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 there, there are very good reasons for, for, for bombing Iraq uh, right. and murdering the innocent people who live there. Um, and, uh, George Bush fought, uh, Similarly, there are very good reasons for attempting to find a peaceful solution, <laughs> I think. That's a balanced answer. <laughs> <laughs> don't think so, buddy. Well, that's wonderful coming from The Guardian. You don't normally get a balanced view from The Guardian, but there we go. Well done. Mm. They didn't accuse your husband of corruption, did they? <laughs> 
God damn. So what exactly did the editor do now that you parted company, shall we say, with uh, today programme? Set up items for the following morning, set the agenda for the programme, uh, right. set up the interviews. So you would be in charge of the smooth running of uh, yes, the all right. programme? Yes, yes, that's right. right yes. Okay. Yes, that, As that. illustrated by this up-to-the-minute ah, report good. on the Middle East crisis. Now, I've been talking to Tony Benn. He has often criticised the United States in the past. I asked him what he made of All this. All said anything. <laughs> <laughs> Has oh, Paul yeah, said a I'm single sorry, thing? We obviously have a problem there. That was the wrong thing. <laughs> but, uh, now, they, they were actually Mongolian people singing through their throats. Uh, I've seen that. As, that explains uh, it all, yes. By, by, by some mischance, we, we, we pressed the, the, the wrong button. The wrong, all right, the wrong yeah. button. Uh, Tony Benn afterwards uh, said it was a conspiracy. And actually wrote to the BBC saying that he, he, he believed that it was a deliberate attempt to make him look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Saddam Hussein's landslide election victory in which uh, he won 100% of the votes. At a press conference, Tony Blair reiterated his support for America's war against terrorists, saying they will strike anywhere, they don't care how many they kill. Uh, to which George Bush replied, damn right we don't. <laughs> uh, Paul and Rod, it's this man again. Oh, you're all right. Oh, yes, ah. this is uh, the wonderful are. Jeffrey Archer. Um, there he is. Oh, some... Oh. oh. <laughs> Somebody's hissing. <laughs> you can't help but laugh, can you? Boink. <laughs> He's guilty. Read my lips. He's guilty. <laughs> uh, he went to prison and he found that it meant being locked in. <laughs> and bars. And bars. bars. And it's full of bars. convicts. Transfer him to the open-air prison yes, this yes. week. Next week, put him back to Lincoln. <laughs> so he's been an administrative error. Right. I think but Paul the should be the governor. Yeah, I'll be the governor. I'll be the governor. Where do I apply? Be the governor. The last governor, Geoffrey Archer, was caught breaking his leave arrangement. The governor said, well, he promised me that he wouldn't break his arrangement. You think, he was in for perjury. <laughs> <laughs> How was he punished? What was his punishment? Yeah, for, yeah, one uh... of his books was read to him. <laughs> <laughs> Dale. He's banged up in prison. You're, you're, you're banged up in luck. prison. It's, 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 it's awful. It's, you, and you, and you, you get yourself out and you smell freedom in your nostrils. And what do you do? You go to Gillian Shepherd's house? <laughs> you know? I, I, I think I'd rather be buggered in the cell block. <laughs> and if that's what you're into. Christine, have you ever um, been to Gillian Shepherd's party? No, well, I've never been to Gillian Shepherd's. Just for the record, we've never mm. been to Geoffrey Archer's Shepherd's Pie and Champagne parties either, because oh. she's not. Not one of my favourite people, never has been. Why didn't you like him? Because I met him about a week after he'd been elected the youngest member of Parliament, and I thought, what a bumptious, obnoxious, self-important, over-opinionated prig. <laughs> All right, fair enough, brother. That was... That was when I was... So you're not always wrong. I was 18. <laughs> well, Damn. listen, it was the same conference where I met my husband, you see, sir. You can't win them all, can you? It's been a long week. <laughs> There was uh, some At astonishing... At least I've been faithful. In ...insight. Oh. Oh. <laughs> You've unleashed the nuclear deterrent earlier. <laughs> God damn. There were some astonishing insights into Lord Archer's uh, spheres of reference in the, in the diary. Uh, day 14, breakfast. Uh, a packet of cereal called Variety. <laughs> Eight different cereals in little boxes. <laughs> I start off with something called Cocoa Crisps. Those are fire. This is then uh, prisoner FF8282, or Lord Archer of Western Supermare, who's currently residing at Her Majesty's pleasure, although surely not just hers. <laughs> According to one of the security chiefs with whom Geoffrey Archer recently lunched, Archer is anti-drugs and was telling us of prisoners who are dealers and how drugs oh. are getting in. So, E-Wing, if you're watching, his lordship's a grass. <laughs> Ian and Christine, your second test. Oh, this is people having to take A-levels. Just getting their results. We don't know. There's ah. Estelle Morris. Everybody failed. Schools and hospitals hospital first. first. Now downgraded to a third. <laughs> <laughs> she's the first time she's come to prominence. Nobody knew who she was until it all got messed up. No, I think most people thought she was a perfume. <laughs> um, <laughs> the whiff of failure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How many papers were remarked then? Well, uh, they Re remarked 300,000, and yeah. then they found that 2,000 people had actually been given the wrong grades, and someone said, oh, it's a storm in a teacup, but 
Presumably for 2,000 people it was rather bad news. Mm. And who took the rap? Oh, William, William Stubbs. Stubbs. William Stubbs. Mm. He got fired. And then they had an inquiry, which is what um, the Labour Party always do. You have an inquiry. But come on, let's not be party political about this. All governments shove it mm. off into an inquiry. Gosh, this is terribly balanced of you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm not in politics anymore. I've joined the 98% of the population that doesn't give a damn what goes on at Westminster. And that includes uh, Tony Blair, unfortunately. He's in that 98%. <laughs> God damn. Uh... Left the artificial world of politics now for the real world of media and television. It's much more fun being here. <laughs> <laughs> the real world of television, being stuck on a desert island with Yuri Geller. The world <laughs> <laughs> and what has uh, Ian Duncan Smith said this week? He said um, A levels weren't worth the paper they were printed on. So instead of 2,000 candidates <laughs> hating him, about a million hating him. <laughs> so you were a bit of a rebel at school, weren't you, Christine? Yes, of course I was. I've been a rebel all my life. Didn't your mother say that we, you never work out whether you were expelled or not? You don't want to believe what my mother says. Goodness me, Granny, crikey. She's an unguided missile. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so it's genetic, isn't yes, it? Yes, <laughs> God damn. This is the A-level grading uh, fiasco, uh, which has seen a number of exam results regraded. Bookmakers are now taking odds on which ministerial posts are likely to become vacant in the near future. The favourites being education, education, <laughs> education. <laughs> Don't forget and education. And finally in this round, Paul and Rod, the aforementioned... Oh, yes, there's John Major um, sneaking behind Edwina. Uh, oh, heard... it's the book. Yep, yeah. there's the book that's not selling. He's happy the book's not selling. <laughs> <laughs> that's Claire Latimer, I guess, ah. and uh, here's the wife. No, don't laugh. Um, <laughs> this is the most extraordinary story, uh, that Edwina Curry and John Major were lovers. Nobody could quite believe it. It's such an un un extraordinary coupling. And how does she refer to Major in the diaries? As mm. B, isn't he? It's a secret code, yeah. B. Yeah. She described the character B as a risk taker who liked to walk on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> no great surprise that we never twigged that it was John Major. She was <laughs> if you were a man, Ian, I mean, yes. if you were a man. Yes. <laughs> Angus, if any yes. Of, well, you're all men, aren't you? Gosh, I've only just realised. If you were a man, <laughs> would you would you would you sleep with Edwina rather than Claire Latimer? Talking to you, I guess. It's not being in the Conservative Party, it's not actually compulsory. <laughs> what part are you playing in the pantomime? I'm the good fairy, of course. <laughs> but, uh, what is Neil playing? Is he wishy washy? No, wishy washy isn't in Jack and the Beanstalk. He's not playing the Beanstalk. No. <laughs> He's the King of Merrydale. <laughs> King of Merrydale. Right. Is that an elected post? <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about, uh, yes, the shock revelation about uh, John Major doing something interesting. The revelations have uh, forced people to reassess John Major's years in office. One former colleague told the Sunday Mirror, none of us could understand why John kept blocking Edwina's peerage. <laughs> well, I've heard some euphemisms in my time. Yeah, that's way of putting it. So, at the end of that round, the score is uh, as level as Baghdad for all. by Christmas, being as it is for all. <laughs> round two reacquaints oh. us with the literary delights of tabloid headlines, as illustrated by the frighteningly impressive It Could Be Choose, Ian and Christine. Well, I think this is the lottery, because their slogan is It Could Be You. Uh, it has you... been me. I won the lottery recently. Really? Not, not the big million one, but oh yeah, I won a tidy sum. How much? Mm. Fortunately, I bought the ticket, because as I'm married to a bankrupt, if he'd bought the ticket and won, the money would have ended up with the Egyptian grocer, but I bought the ticket. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right, then. Yeah, that's yeah, all right, It's right, a then. very tidy Inside, sum. Done sight more than you get paid to be on this programme. <laughs> <laughs> well, they pay what people are worth. <laughs> oh, that's a good comeback. Could be choose. People are annoyed with the lottery um, because they keep giving it to projects that the Daily Mail says aren't suitable. So the new idea is, on your lottery ticket it will say, would you like to give money to really good causes or boo illegal immigrants? <laughs> will Dying say, kiddies yeah. or horrid people? <laughs> uh, what did they actually suggest that their readers do? 
Well, just stop buying the tickets, stop, yeah. uh, Well, worse than that, they printed the uh, office address of Lady Britain, who's the chairwoman of the uh, community fund, and urged readers to vent their justified anger, as a result of which she received death threats and excrement in the post. Oh. Well, <laughs> charming. That's uh, well, quickly. not, actually, no. 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 <laughs> You're misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> Quite unpleasant. Um, <laughs> I don't, want to, I don't want to harp on this, but I'm, somebody, has, somebody basically has a crap in an envelope and then posts it. <laughs> Do they take it to the post office and have it weighed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's your point. Is this really because people don't like the charities, or is it just because they don't want to buy lottery tickets I think people anymore? have realised the chances of winning it are minute. Mm. Finally the pennies dropped. <laughs> yes. Well, you won. Yeah. Well, that's true, yes, I did. How much? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the row then over lottery handouts uh, after it emerged that some lottery money is going to groups campaigning for asylum seekers. Lady Britain, the head of the Lottery's Community Fund, received death threats and excrement in the post after the Daily Mail helpfully printed her official address. And if you think that it was a bad idea to publish her official address, then why not write to Paul Dacre, editor of the Daily Mail, <laughs> to Derry Street, London. Oi. Paul and Rod, your roundabout clue. Lights, camera, Croydon. Yes, this is a very funny story. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to hear it. wants to make itself the film centre of Europe, the film capital of Europe, and they've issued this sort of booklet that says, bits of Croydon look like Los Angeles. If you're setting a thrill in Los Angeles, film it in Croydon. We have fields, skyscrapers, traffic lights, dogs. Come to Croydon and Homeless film people. in Croydon. Why does Croydon have a film commission? <laughs> What's the point? Rambo 3 was filmed in Croydon. No. <laughs> The, the third Rambo? <laughs> <laughs> Are there any pictures that prove that Croydon looks like Los Angeles? Interestingly, yeah, interesting none thing. whatsoever, no. no. Oh. Uh, but it no. does claim that it can look like uh, New York because yeah. 50 buildings in Croydon have over 16 stories. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, it can look like London. Who'd have thought? <laughs> uh, uh, Prague because it has the same trams. Croydon. Yes, although the trams in Prague don't have Streatham written on the front. <laughs> uh, this is the launch of the Croydon Film Commission, uh, who are promoting the South London suburb as a attractive yet glamorous film location. Uh, the head of the new Croydon Film Commission, Hugh West, declared, bits of Croydon could easily pass for New York, especially when shot from street level. That's Hugh West, who's the exact double of Brad Pitt, as long as you only look at his shoes. <laughs> Which urban sprawl means at this particular junction, uh, well, both sides seem equally unaware of the concept of leading, level as they are on six. Mm. <laughs> Round three, then, affords us the pleasure of four disparate images, of which one is manifestly odd. Which and why is the elusive question. Paul and Rod, your uh, solid crew got... are Camilla Parker Bowles, Claire Boulding, Ben Fogel and disgraced former Tory MP Neil Hamilton. <laughs> hmm. He looks lovely, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah, yeah, he looks good. This is something to do with the Countryside Alliance, I suspect. Camilla Parker Bowles of those four, I think, didn't go on it. I know your husband did. Who's what? Ben Fogel? Uh, ben Fogel is the presenter of Country File. Uh, he was star of Castaway. Uh, well, did he not go on the march? Because he was told it would compromise his own partiality with the BBC and the rest so of the So the other three didn't, didn't go and only Neil Hamilton did? Is... The right answer. Ah. ah. Very good. Well done. All right. Yoink. Ben Fogel uh, said that he didn't want to compromise his own career, that's right, by going on the march. And this, this <laughs> sachets into Rod being fired. I well, he wasn't fired. It was, a, fired. it was a dignified resignation, Ian. Yes, I'm terribly sorry. It was a slip of the tongue. Yeah, I see. <laughs> right. It's the same number of syllables. Fired, dignified resignation. <laughs> right. Did you know you were making a dignified resignation at the time? I, I, I was certainly later aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> the BBC statement said Rod accepts it was a grave error of judgment. Didn't. No. Um, <laughs> So did that sound childish? <laughs> yeah, it, it was a great career move. I mean, you were a little-known public figure, and now you're here you are on Have I Got News For You? I mean, where yes, else do you I'm want to go? Yes, I'm ranked alongside you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 
So you wrote uh, about the oh, countryside alliance. Oh, come on, this alliance. is more fun yeah. than today. Um, saying seeing the countryside alliance march makes you remember why you voted Labour. I said it's why the people who read the Guardian might themselves believe that that's why they voted right. Labour. That's incredibly What's pathetic. That? The idea that it was a sort of the Tory party coming to London was absolute nonsense. Really? The point was that you were supposed to have everything vetted by the BBC, weren't you? Yeah. That you wrote in the Guardian. Yes. Yes. That's right. Well, well we know? all know what BBC stands for, don't we? What's that? Oh, here oh, he comes. God. Are you ready? <laughs> Are you ready for this, boys and girls? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm on the edge of my feet. Good going to tell you what the BBC wants to stand for. What does it stand what does the for? What stand for? Buggers Broadcasting Communism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Must have heard that. It's hardly original. Have you seen Question Time with David Dimbleby? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was on that bloody island. <laughs> <laughs> well, you shouldn't mention <clears throat> the Dimblebys in front of Rod. Why? Ask him. Somebody's <laughs> 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 the Dimblebys. How does she know that I've done something with the Dimblebys and I don't? <laughs> What did I do with them? Come on, we'd better move on. <laughs> well, do you want to clear your name? Can yeah? I sue her? Yeah. <laughs> so the answer is that they were Maybe. all advised against taking part in the Countryside Alliance march, uh, except for Neil Hamilton, uh, who went ahead, as he heard that there would be TV cameras there. Uh, despite uh, none of them participating in the march, the royal family are known to be keen supporters of using dogs to hunt foxes, except for Princess Anne, who prefers to use them to hunt day trippers. <laughs> Uh, Ian and Christine, your identical quads are Peter Stringfellow, Piers Morgan, Bo. Stephen Fry, and Neil Hamilton, <laughs> the disgraced former Tory MP. Well, Stringfellow must be the odd one out because he's in the bath. Can we have a clue? Yep. Uh, he's got yes. a crown on. Um, it's something that none of them did. Uh, it's something that someone here did. It involves. Are they all on Fame Academy? <laughs> Well, now you're getting very close. They were all on reality rivals. TV. No. Reality TV and is certainly involved in the answer. That show Help, I'm Desperate. They was it, um... <laughs> I don't know, because Piers Morgan hasn't done any of those things, even. Peter Stringer... Well, it's something to do with it's, Australia. It's, it's to do with invitations, in fact, really. That new douchebag. Uh, the answer is that they were all asked to take part in I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. Oh. Except... Except Neil. For disgraced former Tory MP, Neil Hamilton. Hang on, wait a moment. Would you mind right. cutting out the word no, no, disgrace no, when you refer to my husband in certainly. future? I will Fire never He's disgraced. What are you? Exactly. <laughs> disgraced, I think. Um, He's got one. So I haven't you can both be right. family values for the last seven years. <laughs> Do you know who else they approach? That's Edwina. Who's that, then? I think they approached an awful lot of people <laughs> no, they did. before they finally found <laughs> people that have said yes. <laughs> I turned it down, first of all, in April, for a variety of reasons, and uh, then they came back to me about a month before we were, they were going and said, please, will you change your mind? We really want you to come. We need a mother hen. Translated as, we can't find anybody. <laughs> <laughs> And what do you actually do all day? Just sit around? We had to get the water, we had to cook the food, we had to do trials, I had to clean the loo. I saw you hugging and crying and then people going You had to eat the pizzas that were brought to you after filming had finished. So is it not true that they delivered pizzas to you? Well, I can't blow all the gaff. If you don't want me to blow the gaff about this show, you can't expect me to blow the gaff about well, that one. Well, what's the gaff what, about, what's this the about this show? What's the gaff about this show? Is something to what do with it? the Dimblebees or something. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know the difference between the Dimblebees, and I never discovered the difference between Anton Deck either. I still get them in the muddle. One's what? a very small insect, and the other one's very popular in gardens. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is that they were all asked to take part in I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, except for Neil Hamilton. Uh, disgraced Neil Hamilton. Disgraced uh, former no. Tory MP Neil Hamilton. Um, <laughs> He wasn't asked, as he was slightly too famous. Um, Peter Stringfellow said no, uh, phrases don't often hear. Uh, according to his girlfriend, <laughs> if he got picked for the horrible maggots and bugs shower, I think Peter would have been on the first plane home. That's assuming the maggots and bugs hadn't got on it first. <laughs> we brush with reality means at the end of this ordeal, it's uh, still neck and neck and neck and neck. Paul and Rod and Ian and Christine all having seven. Somebody win. <laughs> Not that it matters. <laughs>
And so for the audible silence that greets our final missing words round, a swathe of headlines wrenched from their articles, including some more or fewer from this week's guest publication, The Unsurpassed Feathered World. <laughs> And so, eyes down, look in on what a growing threat. Twelve foot pigeon. <laughs> Twelve foot pigeon is a growing threat. Uh, it's been barging its way into off licenses, demanding <laughs> bottles of beer. Oh, a bottle of beer. Well, the size of that pigeon goes to money. <laughs> <laughs> they go, coo! Well, you can have one point as it includes the word pigeon. Yeah. Uh, pigeon oh. fancy as lung uh, is the answer. This is <laughs> Parrot, whatever. Yeah. This is a condition pigeon fanciers suffer from, defined as an allergic reaction to pigeons. They shouldn't be smoking them. <laughs> <laughs> you get this pigeon coming, you saw nobody's looking. <laughs> with nature. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous. Uh, next, what found in artist's drawer? Oh, that was dead tramp. It, it, this tramp had been sort of stuffed and formaldehyde and they was found in, the artist died and they opened up and there was this tramp in there. Holy shit. Yes. The right answer, embalmed tramp. <laughs> embalmed tramp. <laughs> story. Next, uh, what found living in council flat? Tenant. <laughs> David Tenant. Something slightly more dangerous. Uh, machine gun. Uh, <laughs> You're not telling me a machine gun's not more dangerous than a pigeon. Uh, but Anthrax. Not, not as dangerous as a crocodile. Rabbit dog. Which is the answer. Oh, God. Uh, which was How found... did he jump the list? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody crocodiles coming over here, get all the council flats. <laughs> uh, next, pigeon reminded me of what? <laughs> Ian Duncan Smith. <laughs> <laughs> of the fact that I'd left the oven on. Yeah. <laughs> A crocodile. Uh, think Royals. Camilla Parker Bowles. Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, think uh, deceased Royals. Duke of Edinburgh. Queen Mother. The Queen Mother the is queen the right mother. answer. Eventually, yes. Uh, this is the letters page of Feathered World. Uh, what do you think it's called? Pigeon Post. Pigeon Post. Pigeon Post. And finally, Lord Burt admits I what? Fuck pigeons. I am a Dalek. <laughs> Exterminate. Coached Greg Dyke. He did, yeah. yes. Slightly embarrassing for Greg Dyke, though, isn't it? Being what? coached by Bert. I like a top skier saying I was coached by Eddie the Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, random. Plus, it's already called Greg Dyke. Uh, at the end of tonight's That's bad enough. Mine. This week's ugly sisters are Paul and Rod with 11. This week's Prince Charmings are Ian and Christine with 12. Up the cup holds so my a night at a local curry house to our winners, a night at Edwina Curry's house to our losers. <laughs> uh, but uh, before we ask for the bill, the After Eight Mint that is our caption competition. Activities marginally preferable to an evening at home with Christine Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of the program, let me go. God, yeah. you've, you've never had and are never likely to have an evening at home with Christine Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> The one on the left side and the one on the right. I told you to call a plumber Wednesday, but would you listen? <laughs> <laughs> would you listen? <laughs> on which uh, sophisticated note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Christine Hamilton, Paul Merton and Rod Little. And I leave you with disturbing evidence of how a young Boris Johnson got his big break in the Conservative Party. The organisers of the winner dinner date with Ian Duncan Smith competition admits things could have gone better. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And following a unanimous decision at Crufts, Brandy the Boxer wins the trophy for the world's cleanest bollocks. God damn. Good night. Oh, huh. So I was given some background uh, before him. First of all, Rod Little, who was the other guy, just reading up on him just seems like a massive cunt. Um, he's got a 
controversies page fucking on his Wikipedia page 10 paragraphs long and was apparently once uh, arrested for hitting his pregnant girlfriend. So, yeah, it tells you a lot about the person he is. Uh, Christine Hamilton, so, I mean, you know, the, the, um, the stuff with her and her husband was, uh, you know, uh, went through pretty much a lot of that. The, 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 the info I knew going into this was, um, basically this seemed to be the episode where Paul and Ian realized that Angus had to go. Because despite her and her husband's uh, recent controversies, uh, Angus still had no moral high ground. Um, I did not know that it was that dramatic. <laughs> I had no idea that it was that dramatic. Um, her husband take took bribes, by the way, in case you didn't know. Um, that was the thing with him. Um, yeah, Ned had no idea it was it was that dramatic, but yeah, that was that was a tense one. <laughs> yeah, that was a tense one. I mean, she came across as a bit snobby, and maybe she was, but Angus had no moral high ground. And again, by all accounts, Rod Little is just a massive cunt. So no no sympathy for him there at all. Um, but yeah, that was a for, for sure dramatic episode of Have I Got News for You. Uh, next time we watch the show, I might do another one this month, um, because apparently there was an episode just last year, uh, that Harry Hill hosted. Um, so that seems fun to me. But that is it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you, Bert Jordy Guy, for using your points on this. Uh, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave it a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the video description down below, as well as the names of all my patrons. If you didn't know, you can be a patron on me for as little as a dollar or one pound, and you get extra direction videos, as well as reading your comments up to date or like sometimes more. With all being said, though, my name is Taffer. it has been my... Oh, actually, I don't... Um... I don't remember what reaction number this is. I didn't check. Is it 15? I'm going to check right now. I feel like my guess is 15. Let's see. It is... Yeah, 15. My 15th reaction to have. I got news for you. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.